Because the coronavirus has been wreaking havoc on so many vacations, including my own, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I thought that I would revisit a trip that I took to Ireland a couple of years ago. So let's have a look. Come along. Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. With St. Patrick's Day coming up, fast approaching, like literally right around the corner, I thought that it would be great to kick off my little uh, travel blogs of places that I've been to before with the wonderful country of, you guessed it, Ireland. So, I wanna talk about Ireland for a little bit. So do me a favor, close your eyes, and think about Ireland. What do you think about when you think about Ireland? Well, to be honest, when I thought about Ireland, I thought about the color green, Guinness, uh, rolling hills, and castles. But there's so much more to Ireland than just that. Uh, so much more. Endless rolling hills, the wild Atlantic coastline, endless magical castles. I think I said endless already. Um, and leprechauns <laughs> that would allure any traveler to the Emerald Isle it's a land that has inspired both authors and poets like C.S. Lewis and Yeats and has provided the most amazing backdrops to the biggest movies like Star Wars and Harry Potter what did you say are you a foodie well if you're a foodie then you will appreciate Ireland why because you'll love the flavor that the chefs incorporate due to the bounty of all that fresh seafood. If you're after an injection of urban culture, then you've got Dublin, which is a lively city, and you also have Continental Court. Both cities provide you with so much, an abundance of architecture, history, art, and you know what? All the fun is at your fingertips. Um, I'm telling you, it's an incredible place to visit. Um, I love Dublin. I love the people there. I love the vibe. I felt like everyone was friendly. It was um, just a variety of people. Um, I did read that the average age of the person in Dublin is 25 years old, but there's so many tourists. There's just everyone. I stayed in um, the Temple Bar area and it was wonderful to just walk outside of my hotel and just go exploring. You had uh, the castle that was very close by, although I couldn't find it. Um, you had Trinity College. When I visited Dublin, I went during the summer. Uh, the month was July. I actually think it was like 4th of July week. Um, things that caught me by surprise. Summer in Ireland is not like summer in Arizona. Um, I took summer dresses, I took cute clothes, I took spaghetti strap tops. It was cold. Um, I wore a sweater the entire time. Um, I wore, my sweater had a hood, it was like a hoodie, a zip up hoodie, to cover my head because it did like sprinkle on and off. It was beautiful, but it was different. It was a different summer than what I expected. Not bad, it was wonderful, it was just different. Other thing I didn't expect was, um, there's like cobblestone streets there. So on Temple Bar, the main street in front of the hotel was um, uneven. It was cobbled and I wasn't able to wear my um, like heels or boots with heels. I would twist an ankle. So while in Ireland, uh, my fashion choices kind of went out the window for a little bit only because comfort was much more important. So I wore jeans and I wore flats and I wore a sweater. Um, and it definitely made for touring a lot easier than having to look like Bambi, baby Bambi, you know, walking unbalanced all over the place. I stayed at the Temple Bar Hotel, which is located in Dublin, which is located in the Temple Bar area. And it's very, it's the very popular area um, dotted with pubs and, you know, the famous temple bars also in there. Um, but I found the location very convenient because it was close to everything. It was within walking distance to Trinity College, 
to the uh, castle in Dublin. Is it Dublin Castle? I can't remember. But uh, the Haypenny Bridge, uh, everything was just so close by. You could just wander the streets and uh, get lost there for a little bit. Um, I took my camera. I wandered on my own for a while. I got some amazing pictures um, and it was great. I know uh, I had read that that isn't a good place to stay if you're a light sleeper because it's very loud. I didn't have any problems, but I don't have any problems falling asleep. And I know it's not the end all be all of Ireland, but when in Dublin, why not visit the Guinness factory? I did, uh, and I loved it. I did the Guinness tour, um, and I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't very expensive. You pay for the tour, you get to tour the whole facility, you learn a lot about how Guinness is brewed. Um, you go into a like tasting room where you get to like um, smell uh, the Guinness and they tell you about the different like scents that are there. Um, you get to look at the coloring in detail. Um, you get to learn some history about Guinness and then you get to sample it. Um, it was very neat to see the process, to see, you know, all, you know, of the different quality of like brewing Guinness. Um, I like Guinness. It's very good. It almost tastes like a dessert, um, like a dessert beer, I guess. And the end of the Guinness tour ends at the top at a, I guess it's a pub inside the Guinness warehouse uh, or storehouse. And it provides 360 degree views of Dublin, which is just fascinating. And you get a complimentary pint of Guinness. Um, and they had pictures of many famous you know, people that have gone through there and had their pint of Guinness, including uh, Queen Elizabeth II and uh, Prince Philip. And that was very cool to see. So I highly recommend it. You know, if you have the time, pop in. It's totally worth it. One of the other memorable highlights of my trip to Ireland was visiting the Cliffs of Moher. Um, did I, did I, or is it Moher? I don't know. If there are any Irish people watching and I butchered that I'm sorry uh, but they are sea cliffs located in the southwestern region of Ireland in County Clare um, and they're just gorgeous and they're green and you really you're perched up at top so the bus parks down below um, and well I paid for a tour I, I caught the bus in Dublin the bus the tour bus took you all the way down to the Cliffs of Moher which I think was a, at least a two-hour drive um, and from the top you really feel the power of the sea and you the waves just come crashing in and you see how these sea cliffs have been carved out from the waves just pounding it over many years it was just beyond beautiful um, like I said, you feel the force of the ocean, of so the surf, you have the rolling green hills, you feel so tiny more. standing at the top and, and you realize have, that, uh, some little castle you know, compared to nature, course, like we're nothing. Um, um, and there were warnings, you couldn't stand too close to the edge and you can only walk in certain areas because they get these rogue gusts of wind that come through there and tourists have been known to be swept off and you're really high up and if you get swept off that cliff you're not surviving oh and i saw a whirlpool there i've never seen a whirlpool but the water or surf would would um wash in with such great force and then go back out that it <laughs> I saw a whirlpool like right there. It was like the most amazing thing. And in Ireland, I also visited uh, Galway, which is in the western part of Ireland. And that is like a little seaport village. It's very vibrant, very um, lively, kind of like a uh, very, had like an artsy feel um, and almost a medieval feel uh, to it. Uh, but it was so neat, uh, so many little shops, 
so many little cobbled stone roads. Um, it was right along the sea. Uh, there were boats parked there, boats with sails. I'm not very familiar with boats because I, I live in a desert. Um, but there are boats of different colors and like sails with the sails not in there, just like the sticks. Do you know what I mean? The mastiffs, the mass masses. I'll have to show you pictures of what I mean, but it was gorgeous. For someone from the desert, I mean, even if you're not from the desert, it was gorgeous. Maybe you're wondering when is the best time to visit Ireland? Well, are you familiar with Rick Steves? He's like the uh, European travel guru. Uh, he recommends, the, um, actually, I don't know what he recommends, but let me tell I think Rick Steves would say any time is a perfect time to visit Ireland. What did I say? And there you have it. There's my little recap of Ireland. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, leave a comment in the comment section. And to stay tuned for new videos, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, bye.